Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java and Raspberry Pi programming tutorial series. Now throughout the process of creating my Java tutorial series, I've had uh, numerous requests for a large project tutorial that would uh, demonstrate many of the concepts that I've taught. So I came up with an idea. What better way to apply new Java skills than to control hardware using software? We're going to blink LEDs, control servos, use switches, and play around with a multitude of sensors, all controlled with programs that we write using the Java ME, using Java ME embedded. Now the ME in Java ME is short for Micro Edition. If you've been following my Java tutorial series so far, then uh, you have been using Java SE, which is short for Standard Edition. Now some of the language features of Java SE are not available in Java ME and vice versa. Now, some of you know I've been busy writing apps for a while, but uh, now that I have some more time, free time on my hands, I'll split my spare time between creating SE and ME tutorials. A little rusty at the tutorials too, but I'm sure I'll get right back in the back in the seat there. So, now with that being said, one thing that you will need in order to follow along with my ME tutorials is a Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna pull up my little window that I wrote here. I've got my Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge there. I just basically am running a little app on it and then I'm emulating over port 8080 and then I use vb.net to write this little window here and it's kind of cool so I can expand it out and make it whatever size I want there. Did a, I actually bought a Logitech C922 but I couldn't get focus in on, on some of the detailed stuff there so uh, that's the beauty of being a programmer is if you write whatever tool you need in order to do the job. So this is, this is some custom software I've written here. So um, now I recommend you have at the very least the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. Uh, and that's what, what's, what I have here. Um, you can see right up here is where, where it'll be labeled there, Raspberry Pi Model B. And I'll pull this up a little bit larger here. And I don't really need my pointy thing here, but the Raspberry Pi Model 3 Pi 3 Model B. Now, older versions may or may not allow Java ME Micro Edition to be installed. I just don't know. But I can tell you that the, the Raspberry Pi Model 3B does come with Java SE 8 pre-installed and is fully compatible with Java ME Embedded 8.3 and greater plus, basically. So, and I also have a very high level of certainty that future versions of the Raspberry Pi will maintain backwards compatibility with the way the I.O. pins are configured here. Right, so all these pins here, the I.O. pins, um, I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna use my mouse here instead. Eh, maybe I'll use my little pointer there. So we, of course, in the Raspberry Pi have, I'll just go over a brief overview on this for those of you that aren't familiar with it, but you probably most likely will or if you're running the two or whatnot there. The three has some, some better components on it there. Power in, you got a full HDMI, you got your RCA, RCA jack here, your audio, your ethernet, um, you got a total of four HD, uh, um, sorry, USB ports here. And um, on the bottom of the thing underneath here is where you've got your micro SD card. And it's all run by a Broadcom quad core processor there. And then you've got um, some places where you can hook up like a ribbon for the display over here, right? And a ribbon for a camera, external camera there too as well. But what we're primarily gonna be uh, messing around with is all of these I.O. pins up here, right? And I'm gonna move my, move my camera up a little bit more just so we can kind of focus in on these things here. And, uh, refocus. So you see this GPIO tag right here. Um, that's short for general purpose IO. And you'll notice this J8. That J8 will play into a later video when I talk about what each one of these pins do. Some, some of them are um, ground. Some of them are, well, I'll, I'll go into that later there. So anyway, um, like I said, the, the, let me move this back out here. Get it to... all in there. Okay, that looks pretty good there. Refocus. Okay, so um, 
Java SE Standard Edition. It comes pre-installed on this one here, so we can pop right open and and you know start doing everything that we could do for the other that we did on the you know the regular old desktop or what what whatnot there. So um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about about the, about the Raspberry Pi. Now the purpose of these videos is basically to learn Java and explore IoT technology, which is the Internet of Things. It's all new buzzword right now. Um, you know, however, I'm just going to spend a little bit of time talking about how I have configured my Raspberry Pi for those of the, those of you that are new to the device. Now the Raspberry Pi community is quite extensive, and you will be able to find answers for just about everything. Um, so as you'll notice, I don't have anything hooked up to it the power and when you first hook up your Raspberry Pi you'll need to put in your uh, HDMI connector and um, a mouse and a keyboard USB mouse and keyboard you'll need to plug in over there and then of course you'll need uh, the the power adapter there too which you can purchase they recommend a minimum 2.5 amp 5 volt power adapter for those of you that are curious on that. But um, once you've hooked up the Raspberry Pi and you've plugged all that in and you've put in your little micro SD card and installed the operating system, um, you can, you'll get to the place where the GUI has loaded. And actually, I didn't want to do that. I just want to minimize it here. And I am going to remote desktop into the Raspberry Pi okay you'll notice it's uh, it's got uh, if you're not familiar with remote desktop connection you can open it up on on Windows there there's several other ways of emulating the Raspberry Pi's too as well there's VNC it's one of the the common methods as well there so but I'm gonna use remote desktop connection it comes natively with Windows so 10.0.0.35 is the IP address of, of my particular device there and I'm gonna go ahead and connect on that and it'll come up to this screen. Of course, the username, I've, I've still left it as the default. So Pi and Raspberry. And now we're connected into the end of the device there. So um, up here is the Wi-Fi connection up there. So you can see, if you hold your mouse over it, it'll tell you, you know, what what Wi-Fi device you're connected to, and it'll also tell you the IP address 10.0.0.35. Okay, so I'm just going to scoot this over just a hair there so we can see the device as well. So we're emulating, I'm emulating into the device on my local Wi-Fi network there, and of course you can see the device running there as well. So that's how I've got that configured up there. Um, the remote desktop did give me a few problems when I first installed this here. Um, basically, you can get R, I think it's called uh, XRDP. You can install that. And when I did, I was getting a little bit of an error message. And if you guys get that error message, I've got on my website underneath uh, Raspberry Pi tutorials a link to a Stack Exchange article. I'll tell you how to fix it. Basically, you have to uninstall Type VNC and then reinstall remote desktop then install type VNC again there all over that so but once you're remoted in we can do do some cool stuff there so let's go ahead and pop this open here um, we're gonna open up the terminal here and then um, you know, if you've been following my other tutorial series you know I'm a big fan of the command prompt there and doing doing stuff on the command line here and a lot of the commands are the same here in Raspberry Pi as they as they are in DOS and that's because it's a Linux based system so uh, right off the bat you'll see Pi at Raspberry Pi and that's who's logged in at and this is basically the machine name here right and so uh, normally I'd go down to the root of the the C drive the C prompt there and uh, create a Java folder there but I'm not going to do that on on the Raspberry Pi here. I'm just going to do it off of the root of the user folder. Okay, so uh, we're going to do MD doesn't work, but MKDIR is the Linux command for make directory Java, right? And then we can still do CD Java. Okay, so now you can see we've got our Java subfolder listed there. And I'm going to do a MK uh, dir. We'll just do this hello, hello Pi. Okay, I'm going to change directories to the Hello Pi. And now, um, 
Now back in the in the Windows environment, I like using Notepad because it's just a really generic text editor. They've got one very similar here for Pi called LeafPad. Okay, so I'm going to LeafPad hello pi.java. Okay. Well, well, you know, leaf peg. How about we do a pad there? There we go. Okay, so leaf pad is very similar. It even looks like a notepad there. I'm going to go ahead and move this down here just a little bit there. And we're going to put in class hello pi. Standard stuff. Of course, you don't have to do anything different for for Java because it's not operating system specific. But we'll just do system dot out dot line. Hello Pi. Okay, and then we'll save this. Now, what you'll notice down here about the terminal here is you're not back to your prompt yet. So uh, LeafPad is basically blocking at this point in time. So the easiest way to do this is you don't necessarily want to keep shutting down Notepad and then reopening it up, especially if you're going to be changing a lot in your in your programs there. So I'm just going to open up a second terminal server and change directories to the Java folder and change directories to the Hello Pi folder, and then I'm going to do Java C Hello Pi .java to compile. And we're back to the prompt again. No errors. That's good. So Java. Hello Pi, and there we go. We've got our, our standard output there. Um, so just like what you're used to if you've been following my tutorial series, I'm gonna type in uh, Java and then minus version, right? And then hit enter there. And so that'll show you Java 1.8, so that's eight, right? Um, and this is the SE, the standard edition runtime environment. And I did not have to install this. This all came pre-installed there. So however, in the next tutorial, I will be um, walking you guys through how to install ME, Java ME embedded on that. Um, so just uh, just give you guys some final thoughts on there and go over just a couple more things there. Um, if you come up here to the, you probably already know this if, you've, if you're familiar with it there, right? But uh, it comes with BlueJ Java IDE and Greenfoot Java IDE. Those ones are are pre-installed on this here, but uh, you know, you know, I'm a huge fan of learning Java via the command prompt. And you know, don't get me wrong, I love my IDEs and I, I use them all the time, especially you know in a working environment. Uh, but they do not provide that sort of you know low-level nuts and bolts learning required to truly understand how things work under the hood. So now Raspberry Pi, of course, has a couple of these Java IDEs installed, and they really are quite primitive compared to, say, something like Eclipse. Uh, but of course, you know, Raspberry Pi is quite young. Now there is also a, um, a GPIO project out there, GPIO General Purpose IO, um, and you know, you can get up and running pretty fast on controlling input output. But uh, I'm going to teach you how to control IO using actual Java classes for the ME embedded Java class is not just some sort of higher higher end wrapper or whatnot though. So anyway, stay tuned stay tuned for my uh, next tutorial where I will uh, show you how to install and configure Java, Java ME embedded and run our first program. Thanks for watching.